All right, everybody. Hello, greetings. It's Tuesday, December 12th, and this is your Chapo. Just a brief note on uh, programming before we start today's show. Uh, one, uh, I'd, I'd like to just note, I apologize that the episode is coming in a day late, but um, if you'll just allow me a moment to explain, we scheduled a recording for today, Tuesday, December 12th, to accommodate the schedule of, you know, uh, he's sort of a well-known comedian. He's got a new Netflix special coming out, and we really like. You know, we 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 were going to record earlier in the day for him. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, say any names or anything. But yeah, his new Netflix special came out, and then he contacted me this morning to cancel on today's appearance. Um, so you know, as a result, like, look, I mean, he's got a Netflix special coming out. And he did say that he forgot that he had scheduled to do a fundraiser for the ADL this afternoon. So he can't be on today's show. I mean, again, I'm not going to say any names. I'm not going to say any names. We're going to do some advice column questions today. But uh, he, wants me to, he wants to let you all know that he has agreed to come back at a future date and do a fundraiser for Hamas on our show. <laughs> so and I'm just, just another, another note of programming here. I've got... No Chris backing me up on the ones and twos today. I've got no Felix due to said scheduling conflicts caused by Mr. Too Damn Big for Chapo. <laughs> so what am I going to do? Where, where, who do I turn to? Well, there's one person who will, who will never let me down. And really, my loss is your listeners, all of you, your gain, joining me today to go through the world of advice and dispensing it, taking it. It's Hessa Denny from Seeking Arrangements and Movie Mindset. Hessa, Hello. welcome back. Thank you. Oh my gosh, it's my pleasure. Hessa, it's great. It's great. It's great to have you know like friends who support you, friends who are there for yes. you. I'm sorry that Matt Rife canceled on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I I, ga- I gave him my chin, and this is how he fucking. Uh, <laughs> I gave him my chin, and this is how he repays me. I woke up in the hospital and said, "Where is Will?" And the doctor <laughs> said, "Who do you think gave you that chin?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm like I went under, under anesthesia, and like it was like the Twilight Zone episode where. I look like Matt Reif, but everyone else is normal. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's so funny that he did like a reverse Beauty and the Beast where he got <laughs> he got handsome and then became like a horrible person because of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I mentioned, like, you know, so we, we have sourced a, a wide variety of um, advice questions today written into a variety of different uh, major advice columns, and now on a uh, on seeking arrangements. I know, I know, I know. You guys um, sometimes dispense advice, so I'm hoping that you could uh, yes join me on this journey through some some advice questions, and maybe we can um, help some people out today. Yes, our, you ready? Um, I'll do my best on seeking arrangements. The questions um, are call in questions that our viewers call in with. So a lot of them are like, should I become poly? you know, should I become trans? Uh, so I'll try to apply the mm-hmm. the queer uh, knowledge to these questions. <laughs> you, you, will, you will apply the derangements method to these questions. Yes, the derangements well, method. You know, yeah, Hessa, I, I, I got to say this, this first advice column question, which comes courtesy of the New York Times ethicist column, I got to say, I don't think it would be too out of place on seeking derangements. Okay. The question begins as this. The headline is, my 70-year-old mother spends too much money on porn. What should I say? <laughs> let her have uh, it. Letter That's writer. an easy one. It's <laughs> an easy one. Come on. The she letter, doesn't have the much time reads, left. <laughs> the letter reads, <laughs> I already answered it. I my mother, <laughs> who is in her early 70s and was widowed about a year ago, has been struggling to adjust to life without her husband. As her only child, I have also been struggling to find ways to be helpful. Finances have been a particular challenge for her. One concern is the cost of her cable and streaming subscriptions. Recently, she has added subscriptions for four separate premium pornography channels, adding $160 per month to her already exorbitant cable bill. Although my mother is an avid internet user, she evidently doesn't understand that there's ample free pornography available online. Should I discuss this issue with her? I'm aghast at the amount of money she's spending unnecessarily on porn, but I'm incredibly uncomfortable with the prospect of ha- about having a conversation about it. A, n- a number of questions here. Uh, she says she's recently widowed, and like now, he, now the 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 child is, is helping his mother out with finances. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering, like, recently widowed, like, did these streaming sub- subscription charges just show up? Or are these just be like, uh, is this the husband's accounts? Well, that, 
my immediate first thought is this guy, this husband must have been dicking her down like 10 <laughs> times a day if she's like having to fill this, this gap in her life so, so severely. She needs, she needs several hundred dollars worth of, and I, and I like the inclusion of premium pornography sites. Yeah. This, is, this, this isn't, isn't just some casting couch, you know, uh, fresh off the bus from Oklahoma style pornography. This yeah. is premium pornography. This isn't Czech Hunters. This is Luxembourg Hunters. <laughs> 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 oh my god and and uh i and i you know like i'm a little you know this is to the new york times ethicist um column i gotta say i'm a little disturbed by the unethical uh sort of implication here that the the son is encouraging his mother to to pirate or essentially steal f- quote unquote free pornography yeah you wouldn't steal a car you wouldn't <laughs> you know I, I do have an idea here. Okay, uh, my idea is that you hire a male stripper, one of those ones who dresses like a police mm. officer, and they come to the door and they say, "Hello, ma'am. You, um, we've received reports of uh, <laughs> too much uh, paid porn activity." And then he rips off his clothes and says, "Let me show you really quickly how to use Google Images and, Google and uh, porn t- the porn hub." <laughs> Uh, to like look stuff up yeah mom here's how you use google image search to, to find hunky fireman <laughs> yeah no that's not I'm hardcore curious. enough for her at this point yeah I, i'm curious what type of porn she's watching <laughs> is my question I, well i mean that's 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 uh, that's something that, that should be brought up in this conversation yeah but i think your initial reaction to this question was like you know i'm just trying to put myself in the son's in question position and i would probably just rather wait for my parent to die than ever talk to them about their pornography viewing habits. yeah 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 i think that's probably i mean it is it is funny to picture that like the the, <laughs> the bills there's like something for like D mattress man four times for like because <laughs> they do like a, a, a hidden name and the son knows what it is because <laughs> The son is also subscribed <laughs> to the same exact porn well, sites. I mean, like, uh, uh, you know, people say that, like, it's, it's tough to find common interests between generations. But yes. <laughs> but you've seen the pornography. New, the new Lisa Ann video. <laughs> <laughs> She's <laughs> she's got pluck that one. <laughs> she's oh, got guff. I, I love her. <laughs> uh, has a, uh, speaking of uh, jacking off, um, have you seen the latest? Uh, okay, first of all, my favorite thing about the current era of Twitter is the ads that they're running, and I'm wondering yes. if you've seen oh the, the jack ads off for the, the jack off joggers. <laughs> yes, I've seen those. Uh, I don't like. Who is that targeted at? Well. Um, I, I actually have the product open on my computer right now. I'm just, you know, it's a holiday season. I got some shopping to do. And the, uh, the product description here, and uh, shout out to my friend Sean for, uh, for, for uh, cluing me into this one. But the uh, Jack and Joggers are, you know, on sale right now for $80 US. Uh, the product description reads, At first glance, J.O. pants seem like normal, unassuming pants a regular Joe would wear. However, these pants are not ordinary pants. These are jack-off pants. <laughs> An extra-long invisible zipper opens up the crotch area for easy access to your genitals. Jack and joggers are cozy, comfortable joggers with a simple, timeless design made with masturbation in mind. Stay covered and warm while pleasuring yourself. No need to turn the heater up and waste electricity to fap naked. Quickly conceal your junk if someone walks in unexpectedly. Never get caught with your pants down again. And uh, the, the, only, the only conceivable, like, the, I guess the target demographic for this would be like flashers. Yes. Like, <laughs> easy, zip up the joggers before the woman on the bus notices what you're doing. Yeah, or like re- Antarctic researchers. <laughs> it's really cold. See, like copy like that, you can't write that with AI. You no. need the human touch for something like that. <laughs> I like the Antarctic researcher one because they were just like, D- yeah, don't take off your survival suit to fap. You'll freeze to death. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I was like, how fucking, yeah, I just, I don't know. I guess it's the winter, you know, heating is expensive, you know, yeah. but who was getting fully nude to check? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> it's a bit, it, it is a funny image of like <laughs> someone who's like, there's gotta be another way. <laughs> One of those like Con Air commercials. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you guys see the, the other, the other Twitter ad for the, um, 
like it's a device to extract sperm from a spent condom to impregnate yourself against the <laughs> will of your partner. I did see. I I I briefly saw that. I I saw like a little bit of the the animation that it showed to demonstrate it. Mm-hmm. I saw like one second of it, and I was like, I I have to keep scrolling. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I don't want to watch this. <laughs> well, uh, but believe it or not, this is uh, actually not illegal, but it is unethical. So uh, <laughs> yes, just, just, it is unethical. <laughs> just uh, send that one into the uh, New York Times. I got a great one yesterday um, for bisexual.org. <laughs> I got an ad for bisexual.org. <laughs> what, 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 are they do, what, what is this organization doing? Is it just promoting bisexual awareness? I think, it, well, I went on the page and it was like, oh, there's a list of like bisexual fictional characters. There's a list of famous oh, bisexuals. Oh, one of them was Malcolm X. <laughs> yeah, there's Malcolm X. You got the Marquis de Sade. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> like John Maynard Keynes. Uh, <laughs> a bunch yeah, of... You know, and dur- during the Depression... You can hire one of the genders to fill a hole and then hire the other gender to fuck whatever one you want. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's Keynesian. What, what, as, by the way, what was the thing you posted the other day that was like how to confuse people with dark psychology? Oh, that was a TikTok I saw. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I keep getting these TikToks about dark psychology. Well, and I mean, it's, it's, yeah, check, check, check your interests. As, uh, the algorithm <laughs> yes, only shows you what, <laughs> what's inside you. My favorite, it seemed like a lot of them were about like, if, if you're getting yelled at by your parents, how you can get them to stop. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, to get someone to stop being mad at you, ask them if they're having a bad day <laughs> it's like what um to make someone uncomfortable stare at their forehead while you talk to them oh that's <laughs> like, a good wow, one that's a, why would you want to make someone uncomfortable <laughs> when you're talking to them it's, well, um, um but that that also reminds me of um sorry to go off on yet another tangent but i was exploring reddit one time and i found this um locked reddit called dark triad women and Ooh. I to join you Very have rare. to yeah yeah I was I was like oh I kind of want to join this but to join you have to send naked pictures of yourself to the person <laughs> who owns to the woman that, who owns it okay that is dark psychology yes, that yes. is a twisted genius running that subreddit yeah it's it's like um just like yeah I'm gonna send um naked pictures of myself to this person who's running a discord for psychopaths (laughs) (laughs) sounds like a great idea yeah yeah. i'm gonna send this to the zodiac killer fan forum (laughs) yes this okay this next question uh this is the next question from the ethicist a headline my dead relative may have been a racist gangster how can i help his kids (laughs) The, the letter reads Recently, a relative from a distant state was shot and killed in what the authorities believe was a gang-related dispute, leaving behind a spouse and young children in the aftermath. Friends and relatives of the family used a GoFundMe campaign to help with the expenses. Photos have circulated on social media before and since that show my relative and their spouse and friends wearing clothes with the insignia of a gang, which is well known. Over the years, the, according to the FBI and news reports, the gang has been tied to murders, shootings, Nazi symbolism, illegal drug trafficking, and running an escort service. Posts by my relative's spouse suggest that they are proud to be associated with the gang. I cannot support illegal and immoral behaviors that are antithetical to my beliefs, and yet I do not want to walk away. I would like to help the children who I believe are at grave risk for harm and who immediately need support. How might I support the young children when their parent may be embedded in a lifestyle that ultimately proves harmful to their real well-being? First of mm. all, Hesso, my condolences on what happened to your relative, by the way. <laughs> yes, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I, I, well, I mean, when I was reading this, 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 the, the, this question, I was like, I was trying to piece together in my head which illegal criminal gang that they were talking about. Because it's got to be Aryan got, Brotherhood, right? It, well, Nazi symbolism, but then, you know, uh, but like not many people who are, I don't know, haven't been spent a long time of their life in prison or like really like supporting, you know, was it the, the four leaf clover? It's like sort of a more covert organization. I'm thinking like the proud display of regalia and symbols associated with, you know, drug trafficking and some, some light Nazi paraphernalia. It's got to be the hell's angels, right? Or like yeah. some sort of motorcycle gang. I'm assuming. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I would just, um, 
<laughs> I like the idea that like this is a, like a distant relative. The person sees the GoFundMe and someone has like a biker cut on and they Google like Hell's Angels and just read their history of like being an outlaw biker gang. And they're like, oh, no, I don't I don't support this. No, it thank really, you. It, my question is, had they ever met this relative before? <laughs> because I feel like it would be kind of hard. It's If someone's in the Hells Angels, you can kind of tell. Like, right yeah. away. It seems like it's not, you know, a, a difficult, you know, they wear that jacket everywhere, that yeah. cool jacket. They, <laughs> they ride a motorcycle. Yeah. And, and the thing is, the jackets are very cool. They're cool. And so I guess like I would, I would... I, I would I would ha- I would caution the letter writer to just maybe like investigate a little further because there's a lot of people who you know associate with the costume of being a biker that are not actually in the Sons of Anarchy you know they're sort of like the Sturgis you know annual crowd where they like dentists who truck in their Harley from like you know out of out of state and then yeah. you know like hang out for a week playing playing biker gang guy. One time my friends and I were in Vermont and we saw. Um a huge biker gang of just butch lesbians just <laughs> hauling down the road in like Hell's oh, yeah. Angel style jackets. We were like, wow, I want to get, if I wanted to get hate crime by anyone, <laughs> it would be them. <laughs> I, if I'm buying bathtub crank, it's from those gals. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Just some, uh, some shake and bake meth and, um, you know, like a Ani DeFranco <laughs> record. <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess my like uh, this is name withheld on this, but I just like the idea that they're, they may be embroiled in a lifestyle that's harmful to their well being. I would just say like you didn't know this relative was a biker or in a criminal organization, so you probably don't know them well enough to donate to the funeral. So just you know take the load off. Who cares? Yeah, I, I think it's probably it's probably those kids are gone. <laughs> those kids are if, if this if this is true and the mom is posting like. We're proud to be, you know, part of the Hells Angels. We love it. We love it. It's there's really not much you can do. Like I've never seen Sons of Anarchy, but mm-hmm. I think um, I imagine that that's, I'm sure someone on that show has kids, and I'm sure they don't turn oh, out that, well. Uh, actually, actually, I mean, like having seen Sons of Anarchy, I can tell you what's going to happen to these kids. <laughs> okay, and that what's is that um, that that's going to ha- what, what's going to happen. Unfortunately is that IRA connected uh, arms traffickers will kidnap them and take them to Ireland. And then the, the, the whole third season will be derailed by this fucking ridiculous trip to Ireland where they take their motorcycles to Dublin and drive around and get back Jax's baby from the IRA. How do they, how do they get the motorcycles? To in Dublin? a cargo plane, in a cargo plane. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, so I would say to this um, letter writer, um, try to, you know, d- protect them from the Irish as best you can. I don't know what wards them <laughs> off. Maybe garlic. I might be thinking of vampires, but <laughs> mirrors. Put a bunch of mirrors around the house. Oh, um, oh, duels. Put oh duels everywhere. You know what? Actually, here, here's here's a sincere here's a sincere reply. In lieu of sending money to help with the funeral, send a copy of Hunter S. Thompson's groundbreaking work of investigative journalism, Hell's Angels, which is a book that does a great deal to demystify the you know outlaw biker mythology of the Hell's Angels and portray them as the nasty gang of sociopathic rapists that they really are. Yes, reading. A reading can save the day here. <laughs> okay, uh, this is the uh, next question from the ethicist. Uh, headline, our summer intern brags about his illegal hobby. Should I tell HR? <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I'm going to just stop you right there and say no. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> and, I don't, and the there's very is. few hobbies <laughs> yeah, that yeah. this could be that you should tell HR. Well, well the, the hobby will be revealed in the letter. Okay. So <laughs> it, the letter is as follows. Our professional services firm has an intern for the summer who, by all accounts, seems to be producing good work. He arrives early, stays late if needed, and shows that he is truly interested in what we provide our clients. This person is interested in a full-time role at the firm. I was recently having a casual conversation with him, and he mentioned his hobby of fixing up cars and then racing them on public roads. He boasted that he frequently reaches top speeds of over 130 miles an hour, but he claimed that this driving is safe because they do it only when a highway is empty. It be, if it became known in our firm that he broke speeding laws in this manner, I suspect his chances of getting a full-time offer would be seriously impacted. Like most firms, we value our reputation. If he got caught speeding at that rate, it could be reasonably expected to end up in the news. I was 
struggling with what to do. Should I let human resources know about this behavior so that we take it into account when deciding whether to make an employment offer? Should I keep quiet and hope for the best and let him be evaluated only on the basis of his work at our firm? Should I approach him and tell him that he is risking his life and possibly the lives of others and suggest that if he wants to keep racing, he should do it on closed racetracks? Okay, so... <laughs> this is okay. a lot going on here. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. I'm just saying to this financial services firm or whatever client based services, if you want to fire Bruce Springsteen and not give him a full time <laughs> <Yes>. role, <laughs> the summer is here and the time is right to go racing in the streets. Yes. The I what I'm picturing is uh this guy be like who looks like um, you know, Dwight Schrute being at the water cooler like so, like, what are you uh, getting up to this weekend? And Danny Zuko saying, <laughs> like, hey, you know, I'm racing for pink slips. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, this I, is like uh, yeah. the coolest intern of all time. <laughs> yeah. I don't what, know what, why what you the fuck? Yeah. Should you tell HR, yeah, about like an upcoming promotion, baby? Put, <laughs> yeah, tell, put this kid in charge of the company. Tell HR that you're a loser nerd. <laughs> I, I think what you should do is go to one of these races yourself, sit in the passenger seat and just get the rush. Because I think yes. what you're afraid of, what you're really afraid of is t- is that you wish you were you were this man and you're jealous of him and his daredevil ways. Like I <laughs> Okay, she's she's gonna she's gonna show up to the race, like hoping to get covert footage that she can send to HR. And then what does she find? The head of HR is like one of the chicks in the Fast and Furious. <laughs> movies who like drops a bandana before they <laughs> kick off for- <laughs> it's every single other person at the company is in on the racetrack except for them <laughs> uh so yeah this is an easy one just just stop stitching stop stitching yeah that snitches get stitches yeah that's that, that is a very good uh ethical principle to hold to yes all right um moving on I would like to uh, now switch to uh, yeah. We're, we're now now we're going to move over to Slate.com, which is really the the meat and potatoes of my obsession with advice columns. And uh, I said this question comes courtesy of the care and feeding advice column, which is all about families and child rearing. So I don't have kids, but I will do my best to uh, proffer some good advice to this person. So the letter begins as such: Dear care and feeding. My daughter, Suzanne, has recently started sixth grade. For the first week or so, she was excited to be starting middle school, but that quickly faded, and now she doesn't want to go at all. Most of it is anxiety about dealing with one of her new classmates, Peter. Peter hasn't done anything to directly harass her, but he seems to just be a weird, disturbing, and possibly disturbed child. I actually did hear about him from the first day as everyone was supposed to introduce themselves to the class and say something short about themselves. Peter's speech apparently was, quote, I am the one who fellates the giver and you had all better remember that. <laughs> what the fuck? Wait a second. Okay. <laughs> I am the one who fellates <laughs> the giver and you had all better remember that. Oh, no. I'm trying to like in my head, oh, I'm no. rotating shapes in my head to figure out <laughs> God. And all I could think about is that this kid wants to suck off that kindly old man from that book everyone read as a kid. <laughs> yes, the that's exactly what I pictured. <laughs> <laughs> like, he was like, I keep the memories. The world now, going from black top, and white please? to color. The second <laughs> <laughs> nuts. <laughs> but, uh, oh, well, this, this question doesn't end there. It, um, it keeps going. He will frequently shout out in the middle of class pertaining to his interests, which mainly seem to be necrophilia, cannibalism, and bestiality. Uh, the sixth, this is the sixth grade. I oh mean, I suppose God. that's, I suppose, yeah, she is. Suzanne is understandably upset at having to endure this day in and day out. I called her homeroom teacher and voiced my concerns about Peter. The response I got was not encouraging. After some back and forth on the phone, I got told that this is not the first complaint she's had about Peter, but that the school policy that kids like him, and you could hear the air quote, had to be mainstreamed now, and that Suzanne should try not to get him, should try not to let him get to her. I don't know what to do at this point. I can't get her class changed, and I can't seem to get the teacher to do anything about this problem child. Should I move and try to get a different, into a different school district? escalate to someone if so who the situation has only lasted a few months and is already unraveling i can't make my daughter go through this for years (laughs) i don't 
this I, I is a co- lot going on. Yeah. I was expecting something like funny weird that he was going to say for the speech, but that's just very scary. <laughs> that's you should call CPS is what you should do honestly because this kid is probably getting abused or something yeah this is very yeah this is disturbing um and i, I just like i when, the, when she called the teacher and she was like kids like those need to be quote mainstreamed now that's like, what very kids, strange what type of kids is she talking about like aspiring yeah. <laughs> serial killers is this what wokeness has done to our school it'd be funny if if she meant like um like uh, Polish kids or something. <laughs> <She's just laughs> <her. laughs> uh, I would say though, like I mean, I mean, it, you know, yeah. Classroom, classroom bullying is always tough, but I would say to Suzanne, you know, like you got to give it back as good as you get it. So like, just start saying, you know, you're. He said, he said, you know, he brings necrophilia to the fight. You say, I, I don't believe in the Holocaust. You know, just keep escalating. <laughs> say say I, something even more appalling than what? Then I'm the one who fellates the giver. Say I, I give cunnilingus to Ender's Game or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you got you gotta stand up to bullies yeah you gotta if i would say just move <laughs> I think at that point you gotta cut your losses you gotta move i would say contact the fbi's mind hunters division <laughs> yes, this kid needs something. to be mind hunted to a permanent this kid's, degree this kid's parents are henry lee lucas and Otis tool i think <laughs> it's like the only explanation i could think of um yeah that, that, that's a tough one but you, yeah move or contact the fbi is what i would yeah. say Okay, uh, next care and feeding question. <laughs> this is a really good headline. <laughs> the, the headline for this question is, my brother has developed an absurd rule about magic at his house. <laughs> <laughs> if, Let's if fucking this is, go. <laughs> if, 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 if this is about stopping me from playing the card game, then this guy's got another thing coming. Fat chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait till I break out my red deck, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so dear Karen Feeding, my brother Steve is a very practical man. He's a good father, but he's not very sentimental, and I would never expect him to do things like elf on a shelf hijinks or sprinkling fairy dust when the tooth fairy comes. However, I wasn't prepared for just how practical he is and how it would affect my own parenting. He has the oldest child in our family, nine year old Levi. My oldest is six. We saw Levi a few months ago after he just lost a tooth. I asked him if the tooth fairy came and he told me that his dad says no fairies or other any other magical creatures are allowed in the house. Pause. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> that uh, his dad just bought his tooth from him. I thought this was sad. I asked Levi about how he felt about it and he shrugged and he said it was weird for someone to come in the middle of the night and take his teeth and leave him money and that he preferred to sell his teeth to his dad. I mean, like, there's a 1,000% chance that this is like a libertarian household. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We don't believe in... We, we don't believe in nonsense like the tooth fairy. We believe in the free market. And His dad <laughs> might be Gary Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, can sell your chil- you can sell children's teeth on a buyer's market. Yeah, we need, we need an open market. We need to replace um, all fair mystical figures with um, free markets. And that will solve a lot of problems in our world. So when I asked Steve about this, he said the ban on magical creatures was something he thought was funny, silly in a good way. And apparently it doesn't stop with the tooth fairy. Any presents from Santa or baskets from the Easter bunny are left on the front porch. And Levi and his younger siblings make a big deal out of putting things in front of the door or at the bottom of the fireplace so the gift giving creatures can't get in. (laughs) But like, okay. So he's saying like no magic in the house, but like this is weird because it's not like he's saying that the tooth fairy and Santa Claus don't exist. He's saying we have to protect our household from these magical creatures. That's honestly cool. That's yeah, I know. (laughs) Because if he was just like some some fucking nerdy atheist who is just like, yeah, actually the tooth fairy isn't real, but he's like, no, the tooth fairy is real, and you know we need to barricade the chimney now. (laughs) (laughs) Get that fire going. That's so cool. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, this, this letter goes on and on. It just says, here's the problem. My oldest lost a tooth, his second, while he was staying with my brother and wanted to sell it to him instead of waiting to get it until he got home. <laughs> so the tooth fairy was allowed to come. Steve went ahead and bought it from him. And then when I picked up my son and saw he'd lost the tooth, Steve pretended he would sell it to me if I wanted it. Later, he just gave it to me. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I mean, he's a sucker, first of all. Because, yeah, I mean, this you is know. the most libertarian shit I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I was pretty upset and told my son we could put the tooth under his pillow that night for the tooth fairy, but my kid was bummed out because he wanted Uncle Steve to keep it. I sold it to him. <laughs> Unlike my brother, oh my I really like the magic of tooth fairies and Santa, but my son isn't buying into it anymore. Uh, this just goes on and on and on here. Is it, is it, so I okay i'll I'll tell your tell tell the son that like okay like uh i i can't buy this tooth from you but if you knock a few more teeth out i'll double like i'll give you double or nothing for it basically so we all make money here (laughs) say um offer one of your teeth to the son (laughs) as um (laughs) as kind of recompense and i i think that what what steve is doing is obviously funnier and funner than just leaving a tooth under your pillow because evidenced by the son being bummed out that and i do think it is lib- li- libertarian indoctrination a little bit but i think it's probably i think ever like a lot of kids have to have a libertarian phase so might as well get it out of the way when they're like six <laughs> you know um <laughs> if the easter bus if the easter bunny trespasses on my property i am exercising <laughs> castle doctrine to <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> to assert my right to protect my home from uh, any magical creature or like i don't know maybe just start telling this kid about other like more frightening magical creatures like tell them that their cousin is a changeling and yes. that like <laughs> and that like while he was so busy keeping Santa and the Easter bunny out of the house like you know an Irish demon uh, replaced uh, his cousin as an infant with some sort of you know uh, yeah changeling um say i think you should put put a ring of salt around the entire border of your house and say Uncle Steve is a skinwalker and we can't <laughs> talk to him anymore we can't hang out with him anymore uh. um yeah, I this is a this is a confusing one. I, I don't quite know yeah. what the best course of action is. I mean is like here. it's just sort of like uh you know, it's like the, the the Donald Trump thing where he said about like, you know, you're nine, you can't possibly believe in Santa, right? That's yeah. You know, so yeah. Everyone everyone has to have the you know, the scales fall from their eyes at some point. And you know, the the tooth fairy, like come on, nine years old. I don't know. I think this is just sort of like let you know, like in families, you gotta gotta sort of let let house let households sort of do what they want when it comes to things like should you shoot a magical creature if it trespasses trespasses on your property? Yeah, the the barricading the doors and chimney thing is really funny. I do like that. <laughs> all right, uh, th- all right. This is another one from Karen feeding in slate, and this one, this is a great one. <laughs> the headline is teaching my young boys about consent seemed like a great idea until now. <laughs> uh oh. All right. The letter the letter is as follows. Dear Karen Feeding, as a mom of two sons, we've been working on consent since they were old enough to shy away from smooches and hugs at daycare. Now three and four. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just stop right there and just be like, this is we said been we're working on this for years now. Three and four? That's like really fucking young. I, I don't okay. know. I'm calling it right now. This is a fake one by some right wing psycho. <laughs> it's like, this is yeah. the risk of teaching kids about consent. Yeah. Well, it says now at three and four. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> we'll see with this one. Now yeah. at three and four, we've run into some issues when it comes to brushing our teeth, washing our hair, etc. My four year old has recently started the whole I don't want to. It's my body. His younger brother mimics him about 98% of the time, which I can appreciate when it comes to not hugging great Aunt Millie. But when it comes out, when he comes out coated in mud, and dirt and won't wash his hair now we have a problem i'm trying to empower my boys to make their own choices haircuts clothes etc but most days they come in from playing outside looking like pig pen and i'm pretty sure if i send my kids to daycare smelling like yesterday's socks someone's gonna call cps how can we manage the fine line between physical autonomy and decent hygiene reason doesn't seem to work and i'm not a fan of bribery now, Hessa, I think you have the exact right uh, instinct here to to spot a fake post. Yeah, and I'm gonna do. And like, there's a, there's a couple there's a couple glaring red flags in this one that like, the letter writer is um I, like someone whose kids have been out of the house for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> and, and 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 one of them is uh, when she says like when they come on, when they come in from playing they look like pig pen. They come in from playing they're covered in mud and dirt. Kids don't do that anymore. Yeah, kids don't kids, play outside. They have watched their iPads in the basement. <laughs> Just, <laughs> they're watching the Skibby D toilet. That's what they're doing. Yeah, and they're not going to cover mud and dirt doing that. And also, if your kids are three and four, 
what are they, what are they doing just playing outside like in the street like uh, should you Were keep they, an eye on them if that, you working on this for years implies that you sat your one-year-old son down and said like let's talk about consent right now because it's it's like so you know oh you're allowed to tell great great aunt millie that you don't want to hug her i great think aunt like, millie is another big red flag there that the yeah. person writing this is from a completely different era and it's yes. certainly not <laughs> someone who would have a three or four year old kid in yes. 2023 yes and the the fact that her second solution that that she thinks of that she's not a fan of his bribery is very well now we're back to the tooth fairy yeah we're back we're back to the libertarian uh section i yeah so i'm calling bullshit on this one i'm gonna say you don't get any advice advice pass revoked <laughs> um because you're you you're know a fraud, but, you're a fake but, you know a d- decent cut you know i mean it was still a strikeout but you know yeah. you, you got you got you got some wood on the ball a few times i mean i do like the idea of a a three-year-old being like my bodily autonomy uh, prevents me from taking a bath <laughs> yes you know it's it's easy you know it's just it's a little too easy but you know solid yeah. effort all right, uh, moving on from care and feeding to the slate how to do it advice column, which is all about sex. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> headline here is, I brought a priceless work of art into my sex life. Now everything is falling apart. You know, I, I know those Mark Rothko paintings seem like seem simple, <laughs> yeah. but you, you really it's, have it's to see artisan, them in person. Yeah, yeah. An artisan like Jade Cockring. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, from that's the not Ming far Dynasty. off. That's a, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay so it says dear how to do it uh i 46 year old male work in historic art preservation a relatively small field so i have obscured some details of this letter for privacy a co-worker and i began having an affair at work she is married and chose not to disclose our secret to anyone about six months ago she is incredibly talented attractive and sexual We would wait until after work hours to sneak back to the storage areas of our workplace where we would engage in all sorts of sexual fantasies, many involving art, which is a career and a passion for both of us. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> remember when that was like that uh that late that that old lady restored that famous painting of jesus and it looked like a fucking finger yeah. paintings <laughs> it, it was it was it was it was these people yeah they were just doing, they were doing sex stuff they the guy nutting and doing the scream <laughs> 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 but no it gets better so uh what were those sexual fantasies you ask well i'm glad you did About a month into our trysting, I was receiving an excellent blowjob behind a somewhat famous neoclassical marble statue, which (laughs) happened to be in our workshop being serviced. Ooh, that's not the only thing. Mm Ayo. Right before I could (laughs) orgasm, I had a sudden bout of dizziness, which occasionally happens to me. So to steady myself and without thinking, I reached out and grabbed the statue. To be more specific, I grabbed the larger than life marble ass cheek of a Greek goddess. This, the cold hardness and sensual curves of the statue combined with the hot, real woman sucking me off and, o- and overwhelmed my sensory brain. It was a good orgasm. My partner noticed and we began incorporating the statue into our sex game. At one point, having pretend threesomes and even a crisis when bodily fluids needed emergency cleanup on a priceless work of art. I even found myself fondling this artwork while I masturbated alone late after hours. Okay, unfortunately, this is a, the, this is a Peter the, Greenaway movie. <laughs> 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 unfortunately the work on our love statue was completed about two months ago and the project was packed and shipped back to its museum home leaving me unable to be aroused i have not been able to get erect since the statue has gone considering com- i'm considering commissioning a replica but a full-size marble and place to put it is beyond my modest means my partner has been upset with my newfound erectile dysfunction and doesn't believe that i'm sincerely lovelorn over a piece of sculpted rock she tried to tempt me with an offer to find a woman to dress up and participate in the same pose as our sculpture, but I can't imagine hiring a person to do something so silly. This is the longest I've gone in my adult life without being aroused. Wow. wow. This guy got, this lady just got cucked by Venus to Milo. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find a woman with no arms to incorporate into like a threesome situation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. Th- I'm thinking of becoming a serial killer, like in that episode of SVU with, uh, with Steve from Sex and the City as the killer. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> the, the amputation fetish guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, 
I, I did like the thing where uh, I did like the point where he said like I, I was getting head so good I got dizzy. It was like he was like having like yeah. Stendhal syndrome. <laughs> but He's like yeah, getting your dick sucked time. by Athena. Yeah. You know, that, that was a good one, but I'm also going to say this was fake as fuck. So, I mean, yeah. it, was, it, it, was, it was funny, but this is complete bullshit. This is Peter Greenaway wrote that for sure. <laughs> I, this, in, in this Peter Greenaway, the Peter Greenaway ending for this would be the the girl dying and the uh, the guy using like wires to like uh, steady her dead body like a statue. And then so he could grab the ass and jack off. And I think that's what you should do. I think you should kill the girl and... To go Peter, go full Peter Green away on it. Was it like was was the movie like the the stomach of a critic? This is like the I don't know. Oh, the belly of an architect. The belly of an architect. Yeah. Yes. This is the I don't know the <laughs> the blowjob from an art restorer. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, this is this is the next how to do it question. Uh, headline: I think my alone time sex habit is fine. My friend thinks it's deeply sinister. Hor- okay, horrible way to start <laughs> my alone time sex habit. I think my alone time sex. If you have to start a sentence like that, it means it's not fine. <laughs> if, you have, if that has to be the first thing out of your mouth. <laughs> uh, dear, how to do it? Can you please settle an argument between my friend and me, both twenty-one-year-old f- female? We recently had a late night discussion about sex and porn. I mentioned that I sometimes found the step family videos that are all over every porn site pretty hot. I was surprised by her reaction. She basically said she thought I might need therapy and probed me about whether I had been sexually abused as a child. I was not. My contention was that I wasn't a deviant. Again, these videos are obviously being watched by millions of people and that people who watch this kind of porn are not really into incest, but turned on by the naughtiness and transgression. I said that statistically, of course, some viewers are people with genuine incest fantasies about real life family members, but that those people are a tiny fraction of the population and that step porn isn't making mentally healthy people want to have sex with their parents or siblings. My friend said incest is much more common than most people think and that porn normalizes it. She insisted she was not an abuse victim herself, though, and this is just something she feels strongly about. I didn't know what to say. Am I contributing to a culture of abuse and sometimes by sometimes getting off to a teen adult teenage son stumbling upon his hot, horny mom trapped in a dryer? Wait, trapped in a dryer? Okay. <laughs> She's trapped. Is that an actual scenario? Wait, you're not familiar with the dryer scenario, Hessa? <laughs> no, I'm Wait. not. You're not? <laughs> She's trapped in a dryer. Yeah, yeah. It's like you know, you, you, you like you you walk into the laundry room, and stepmom is like going, as you know, as often happens, you go too far into the dryer to get socks <laughs> out, and you're like you're stuck, yes. and you're sort of like half on all fours, and you're like, help, please, I'm stuck in the dryer, and then you you know have to have sex. Oh, with your so stepmom. the dryer door is not closed, and it's oh, not. No, no, I was yeah, no, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. No, like, like, <laughs> <laughs> on the window, help! it's going into the spin cycle. <laughs> Fuck, help. <laughs> <laughs> take her out and her hair is all like, like a troll doll <laughs> there's some dryer sheets in there your stepmom will be bounty fresh it sounds like your friend is m- more into it than you are honestly <laughs> <My suspicion. laughs> and you know like uh there's a lot of lot of lot of sort of you know a lot of children of divorce out there and i just like to remind all of them that step parents and siblings aren't your real family and yeah. never will be <laughs> they don't count they don't yeah. count <laughs> um, but yeah, like just 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 moms and step something out there. Be careful about when you're changing the laundry over from washer to dryer because it's yeah, like be- it's, a, it's, it's a very common thing that happens. You could fall in. You could get trapped yeah. in there. And get turned yeah. on. Um, I yeah, I think it's probably it's probably fine. I think this person's probably fine. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't stress too much about it. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it too yeah. much. Just tell your friend. Yeah, I stopped. I stopped watching that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, she doesn't have to know. Yeah. Um, okay, this is the uh, the next how to do it. Wait, it would be funny if um if that the person met their friend's dad and the friend's dad is like <laughs> the sexiest like rock hard body like this. Yeah, he looks like Don Draper. <laughs> yeah. Could you help like me get a, this pie out of the oven? <laughs> yeah, like a Tom of Finland guy, like mowing the lawn, <laughs> <laughs> chopping wood in the backyard. <laughs> All right, this is the next how to do it question. Headline, I have specific requirements for a guy's package. None of them want to hear it. 
Dear How to Do It, I'm a heterosexual woman in my late 20s. I've discovered after some experimentation that while guys with bigger penises are nice to look at, they can be annoying and awkward to take, and sex is really much better with guys who are below average in the size department. However, I struggle to communicate this with prospective partners. Guys seem to have some sort of instinctive need to hear that they're bigger than average and get some combination of defensive and angry if you even suggest that they're not. And they seem to be completely uncomprehending of a woman who prefers a smaller partner. It's cost me a few encounters that could have otherwise gone well. How do I communicate with a man that I'm looking for someone with a small penis without putting their backs up? Just okay. what do you think? I'll, they, I'll, you, I'll, I'll field this. I'll, I'll field this. <laughs> okay, okay, you can handle this. Uh, to, the, to the letter writer. <laughs> Please reach out to Chapo Trap House at gmail.com. <laughs> and, you know, like if you're on Instagram or whatever, just, just drop a link, you know? I mean, like, does she think that guys can, like, control it? <laughs> just be like, can you please go a little smaller? Like, could why you, bring like, it up? The, on the character select screen, could you just, like, take <laughs> yes. that bar down just, like, yeah, a, a few you ticks? You take the bar down all the way. <laughs> <laughs> like, why bring it up? Why bring yeah, it? If I this know, is a right? problem, that like this is like you're causing, <laughs> you're like just by talking about it, like like you're you're causing a problem that where there none need to exist. Yeah, where none need to exist. Like like uh, like you're, okay, like you're 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 with uh, you're with a guy for the first time. You know, like uh, you're you're back at someone's place. You know, it's like you're you're, you're it's going there. Yeah, you, you take off your of pants. Wine. You're yeah. like yeah, you know, and you at the, that moment of anticipation. You know, you unbuckle the belt, the the, the pants come down, the underwear too. The penis is there. And then you look at it and you're like, oh, thank God. I was worried for a second you had an average to large size dick. <laughs> yeah, that's like. <laughs> but thank God that's not the case. It's like the crying game. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's moving up the legs. <laughs> she sees a huge dick and throws it up into a <laughs> trash can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, like uh, this you know, seems I, like a very simple solution. Just don't. Yeah, bring it just up. don't. Don't. Yeah, just don't comment on the, the <laughs> yeah. size of. You know. Don't say, "Oh, you're so small. <laughs> you're so small. I can barely feel you." Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, you're, you're not filling me up. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> Now we've moved on from the uh, the sex questions. So, like, this is like the standard dear prudence, the classic dear prudy advice column. Okay. And, and this this first one, headline: Help! My friends are taking advantage of wheelchair rides at the airport. I just might join them. Okay, dear prudence. First of all, dear prudence, and then starting it with help is <laughs> is this the Beatles uh, <laughs> album? <laughs> Sorry. Right. Uh. A friend who vacations often discovered free wheelchair rides throughout the airport, making her first in line to, from ticket counter, security TSA, to departure arrival gates, to baggage claim, and first boarding with access to onboard storage. Recently, her partner, who was running behind with the luggage, realized he too could get a chair and that the attendant m must also haul the luggage, put some meds and check luggage, marked it medical supplies, and it's free. All they have, uh, all of this, if they have difficulty walking long distances, which they claim is nearly everybody. Certainly, us geezers, given the size of expanded huge airports. At first, I thought they were taking unfair advantage or being unethical. But the more I think about it, the less I care. I travel <laughs> rarely. Navigating the airport logistics with knowledgeable assistance sounds reassuring. I can claim difficulty walking long distances as well as anybody. Now, I don't think that this is really an advice-seeking letter. I think this is a letter just advertising to the rest of society that you can do this yeah because so, now that i'm aware of this yeah. oh you better believe i'm getting <laughs> yeah. wheelchair assistance next time i'm at an airport signed jerry seinfeld <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, like this is such yes. a george yes. a yes. george yes. costanza <laughs> thing to <Yes>. do <laughs> <laughs> like this but, is fully know. just be wary of like a seinfeldian uh comeuppance coming your way you know keep an eye out if if there are any you know if Kramer starts seeing a girl in a wheelchair or something and she calls you out or something like that might happen, you know. It, it could be coming to a hilarious comedic denouement. But yes. it, until that time, just like take advantage. Because I fucking, I mean, airports are the fucking worst. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, like, I, 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 feel, I feel mentally handicapped every time I'm just inside one. So I might as well just go the extra step and um, pretend to be disabled. Yeah. 
It'd be it'd bring a blanket, put it over your legs, like FDR, <laughs> go the full nine yards. <laughs> oh, I have, a, I have a monocle and like a cigarette in the holder as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, I was. Is there one? Has there always been one Prudence, or is the new one elected uh, like the, the Pope? The, it's it's like it's like the Dalai Lama. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they, they they find they find an infant somewhere and lay out like all the previous Prudences, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. letter answering <laughs> technologies. Uh, okay, let me find the next one. <laughs> okay, dear Prudence, help! I think my partner's self-diagnosed autism is a hundred percent fake. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm not even going to read the letter here. I'm just going to answer it for you. It is. Next one. <laughs> <laughs> I Well, I think it's a sign of autism to, to give yourself fake autism. <laughs> it's probably, it's like a snake eating its own tail. Thing. <laughs> you know? Yes. Um, all right. Uh, this next one's a good one. <laughs> dear, dear Prudence, help. I left my husband for the guy next door. Now my neighbors feel betrayed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh dear prudence this august i left my husband for my next door neighbor my husband was upset but we are now on good terms okay <laughs> that's a little <laughs> is is the neighbor mowing your lawn now or something i mean is that, <laughs> yeah. was, that was just negotiated <laughs> he's got to clean the leaves out of the gutter the every, desperate you know, every housewife's weeks. ass like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My problem is with our uh, other neighbors, the Barclays. Uh, I, I love their center. <laughs> My eight-year-old son is best friends with their nine-year-old daughter, and she usually lives at our house after school. Since my affair, they have refused to speak to me and have forbidden their daughter from being at our house when I am there. We are alternating days. They have also blocked and deleted my number. Their reasoning is that I betrayed their friendship. I agree I betrayed my affair as partner's wife. We were friends, but them? The interesting thing is that Mr. Barclay had an affair five years ago. I believe their silent treatment stems from Mrs. Barclay's misplaced anger at her husband. She also sons the woman he slept with. I don't care about losing the Barclay's friendship, but it's very triggering that our kids continue to play at their house every day, but that she isn't allowed to come into ours as if I'm a criminal. I just feel it just feels like unjust punishment. How do I get them to reverse course? Um, just like I have another like, affair. Yeah, I think you got to get <laughs> Mr. Barclay or Mrs. Barclay and your husband together in a room. <laughs> yes, <laughs> try and like, get them. <laughs> all scales will be evenly balanced at that thing. All accounts settled. Yeah. No one will have any reason to be mad. Yes, yes, exactly. And I think, I honestly, I think you got to take your lumps with this one. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, it seems like you've got a pretty sweet deal going. I, I like if you're. You know, you're with the next door, the hunky next door neighbor. Um, you left your drip of a husband behind, and he's still on good. He's still on good terms with you. That's really, you know, yeah. incredible. <laughs> um, you're you're pretty set up. Like if you say you don't care about the Barclays friendship, like just let it go. You don't have to be. You don't have. Listen. I'm from friggin' New York City. You hey. don't have to be friends with your neighbors. You don't even have to like be aware of their existence, even though they're yeah. like ten yards away from you. Exactly. Um, I, I like this letter because it, like it reads like a like you know the other one was like a was it a Peter Greenway film? This reminds me of like a John Cheever story. This is like fucking. Uh, <laughs> my, my husband won't stop going in our neighbor's swimming pool. <laughs> I've left him years ago. Our house is empty. He has nowhere to go. He just keeps swimming. <laughs> Yeah, no, I um, fully, I think, to fuck the Barclays, um, you know, if unless they were giving you free tickets to their center, that's, yeah. it's totally a, a non-starter. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. Next. Uh, let's make this. Let's make this the last question here. All right. This is dear Prudence. Help. My father insists on ruining my precious visits with my uncle. So this is like this is this is a good question. This is like unc a great magic. uncle uncle unc magic. Yes, dear Prudence. A few years ago, I asked my uncle to teach me how to whittle carve over FaceTime. I, when I showed no aptitude for carving, it morphed into weekly low-pressure, lovely catch-up session we both enjoyed. This all changed when my uncle invited my father, his brother, to join us. Uh, before I get into the question, I just want to say, like, I, I I think just the idea of your uncle teaching you to whittle over FaceTime is like so precious. I know I, that's I, so I love amazing. That. That's so cool. That's so but beautiful. Apparently, some apparently his fucking brother, my dad, is going to screw it up. <laughs> yeah, my fucking dad. <laughs> Thanks, dad. <laughs> You're 
dad, you're embarrassing me in front of uncle. <laughs> uh, I have a good but not easy relationship with my dad that I navigate by carefully choosing what I share with him. <laughs> I would never share that I'm learning to whittle. Yeah. Oh, he's going to be asking <laughs> that I, if I like, failed uh, at it. <laughs> no, we don't do it anymore. <laughs> I don't even have a little whistle to give you for Christmas, dad. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no clogs for you, dad. Sorry. <laughs> I have a good, uh, so it says, uh, he now attends every week and what was a low pressure outlet has become the opposite. I skip out a lot. When I do attend, I'm subjected to comments on my appearance, interrogations on my job situation. And my very favorite, my dad always working a celebrity. I once loved who has since revealed devastatingly problematic beliefs and who my dad still admires into the conversation. Now this is really the only like relevant part of the letter that I noticed or cared about is just trying to figure out who this celebrity is. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's, let's work on it. We got a whittling family. Mm -hmm. Um, so the pr they're probably white. They probably live in the woods. Um, <laughs> they live probably, in whittling country. Yeah, they live in whittling country. Maybe West Virginia. <laughs> um, let's say probably not Dave Chappelle. Mm. Probably. But he says, maybe Michael says, Rappaport. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love Michael Rappaport yeah. until all of the until all designers. I used to be a huge <laughs> fan of his beautiful acting stylings, and when I discovered, oh, he's not acting, <laughs> I realized it's just when I saw when I saw his sort of like the his pallid flesh screaming into a phone camera. Uh, yes. I was like, oh, uh, I can't talk about this guy with my uncle anymore. <laughs> when I, when I saw his the most alcoholic face. <laughs> <laughs> in in the world i knew i you know my dad's gonna probably love him i i really am at a loss for who it might be maybe like well, it's a, army hammer <laughs> <laughs> well going back to the the kid who's into cannibalism whatnot. yeah <laughs> that's this is dad <laughs> this is his brother <laughs> i don't know i just like i i just think it'd be funny if it was like i don't know it's not it's his beliefs whatever but i was just reading this I was just reading this thing of like, you know, like it's like a it's a Whitland family of like good, you know, salt of the earth American folks. And the celebrity in question is Woody Allen. And yes. every time every time he got he hops on whittling chat, he's just like, Oh, I gotta tell you about watched husbands and wives again last night. Oh man, what a picture. Man, if that's the case, send your dad over my way. We can talk husbands <laughs> and wives all day. <laughs> yeah. Talk money. <laughs> yeah. I'll be in the dryer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It says, I no longer enjoy these FaceTimes. I feel terrible for my uncle, who is very kind, very close to my dad, and who may or may not understand why I so often opt out of these weekly meetups. Uh, I don't know. I don't really have any advice for this one. I just, yeah, you I know. Yeah, nut up and just, you know, who cares if your dad keeps bringing up Woody Allen <laughs> during your FaceTime? It's <laughs> just, you know, just keep moving on. Um, <clears throat> just keep doing you. Yeah, just maybe... Text your. I don't know how tech savvy your uncle is. It sounds like he's using FaceTime, which you know bodes well. Maybe text him separately all of the stuff you don't want to talk about with your dad, and explain. You know, hey, you know, my dad. He um, he's a big fan of uh, you know Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> I don't want to tell him about <laughs> any of this private stuff that I'm telling you. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, well, but I would say just nut up and go to the meetings. It's gonna be you're gonna be glad you did in the future. You're gonna be glad you learned how to whittle. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> or, or, and failed at it. All right, well, so that, that that's it for our advice questions. I want to thank you so much for uh, subbing in for us today. Yes, thank you for having me and 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 holding it down. But I thought maybe um, just at the end of the show, I would take this opportunity to maybe like uh, just just sort of bat around some ideas for season two of Movie Mindset. If you would, oh indulge yes, me for absolutely. A second. I also would like to um, plug uh, the Seeking Derangements helpline, too. If anyone has any questions they want answered. And please also uh, subscribe to Seeking Derangements on Patreon. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Hesse, I just got, got a few ideas here. I opened my notes doc for uh, season two, and I just want to just, just throw a few ideas out for you here. Uh, the first one I have is just Walter Hill. And I don't know what movies yes. to do, but yeah, Walter Hill. Because like, there's just, he does so many, I mean, like all his movies are for like tough guys, but like he does like a lot of different kinds of movies, you know, like, yes. I don't know, would, would I do Southern Comfort? 
Extreme Prejudice, you know, uh, the Warriors, Hard Times, yeah, the the Warriors, the Assignment. <laughs> yes, okay, let's do that one. Well, we already covered that on Secret Arrangements. Yeah, right. so, no, twice, I think we actually covered it twice because <laughs> we forgot we already did it once. But yeah, Walter Hill would be amazing. I would love a Walter Hill moment. Forty eight hours too. Oh one. yeah. Oh yeah. Kind of a darker lethal weapon. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Riggs never uses the hard R word in lethal yeah. weapon. <laughs> It's truly, yeah, well, the poster makes you think it's going to be a funny, you know, a fun-filled romp, but then... Oh, you know what Walter Hill movie I just watched the other day? Uh, the Long Riders, which is fantastic. This oh, movie about I've the, uh, the James Gang. Really good. Oh, damn. There's, like, a lot of really good bullet hits and a lot of really good, like, slow-mo of people being, like, thrown or shot through glass in that movie. Yeah. Another idea I had, and like this one, I'm I'm, I'm going to rely on your expertise because this is a this is a director uh, that's been requested a lot. But I have to admit that my knowledge of their canon of work is appallingly low. So my my idea for another for an episode would be Hesse teaches me about Mr. W. R. Fazbender. Oh my God! Yes, yes, that would be amazing. Oh my God, we could do. Uh, in a year with thirteen moons, we could do, uh, you know, the bitter tears of Petra von Kant. We mm. could do uh, world. Of, oh my god, a world. I will on a wire, wire is the one I've seen. Yeah, that's, it's so good. Um, we could, uh, I know, I know, I know. Uh, the bitter tears of Petra von Kant is one of Connor Habib's favorite movies. So maybe it's one of my faves. A, maybe get a guest for that episode. Yes. Um, another idea I had is like I would like to get. Um, Andrew Hudson back on the show, and I'd like to get uh, Taylor as well. Uh, Andrew Hudson and Taylor, Tupac directs if you're out there. I would love to have you back for season two to do an episode on 90s Robert Robert Altman. So like the yes. player and shortcuts. Shortcuts is so good. Let's see here. And then has a, would you, what would you say about doing an episode on, on, a, t- t- on animated films? Animated films of the Japanese variety. Do you have I any, was any just, picture favorites? I was literally just thinking this. I was like... Maybe we could get Felix on for uh, for that one. Get I I think you know it would be a fun one that I was thinking of would be an OCE episode where we do like Ghost in the Shell. Pat, well, Labor. I was thinking Pat Labor too, Ooh, and, that's... which is like probably his best <laughs> movie, and then like Avalon, which is this crazy. Oh Polish, yeah, the live action like, movie. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, I think I don't know like. See, Oshii would have to be its own episode because, like, I don't know, it would be very hard for me not to do Ghost in the Shell. So maybe, yes. like, Oshii could be its own episode. And then I was thinking, I don't know, like, Satoshi Khan, like, Perfect Blue or something like that. Yes, Perfect Blue and uh, Millennium Actress or Ooh, yeah. Tokyo Godfathers is maybe my second favorite by him. That's, like, one of the best Christmas movies ever. Oh, do you know what I watched? Do you know what would be um, what I watched the other day that was unbelievably good? What? Was uh, Pennies from Heaven. Oh, I haven't seen that one. If we do like a Dennis Potter episode, the um, the famed British Write TV writer who um, wrote such such television series as uh, the Singing Detective and uh, the Pennies from Heaven series, as well as the movie, and also made like all these crazy movies like Blade on a Feather and like just a real class act. It's the world is our oyster. Truly. There's so many. Oh, I see. You know, a movie I watched this weekend Speaking of a British filmmaker is that was fucking fantastic. Which one? David Lean's Hobson's choice starring the great Charles Lawton. Ooh, I've never a, seen that one. Oh, it's, it's so good. It's like, it's one of his comedies and it's about like, it takes place like uh, in, the, in the Victorian era and Charles Lawton is this like, <laughs> tyrannical small business owner who owns like a boot shop and he basically just wants to be a miser and drunk all the time and it's about this sort of uh, contest of wills he engages in with his three daughters who he all makes work for free in the boot shop <laughs> <laughs> but if, if you want to see some like excellent excellent physical comedy of charles lawton being shit faced uh it and it also has like one of the great really tender and moving love stories in it as well Hobson's Choice, I highly recommend it. Oh, do you know what would be a really good one, actually? Um, the guy who made The Shout. Have you ever seen The Shout? No, I don't think I have. <gasps> it's such a Will movie. You would lose okay. your mind at The, the shout? shout. The Shout is about... Um, fuck, it's about a guy getting his dick sucked next to a statue. <laughs> no, it's Alan Bates. 
and John Hurt, and it's from the 70s. Ooh. And Alan Bates is this mysterious, like, sexual wanderer who wanders into <laughs> John Hurt's house and is like, um, I lived in uh, in Australia among the Aborigines for, for uh, like, 30 years. And I, you know, every... I, they taught me their magic. And John Hurt is like, wow, <laughs> when do you think you're going to leave? <laughs> and um, <laughs> he basically, John Hurt is like a struggling experimental musician who can't make any good music. And like, kind of sounds like performance. It's, it's, well, the, the, the crux of it is that Alan, Alan Bates is like, um, they taught me a shout that can instantly kill anyone who hears it. And oh, yeah. John Hurt is like, no, they fucking didn't. You're <laughs> you're lying. And he's like, "Oh, does he put it on wax?" Well, he well, no, he um he goes out to hear the shout, and I don't want to spoil it, but okay. <laughs> some some stuff happens after. It's truly it's an incredible movie, and it's the director of Deep End, the the one about the spa with a uh, soundtrack by Can, and um I think the director also did EO recently. Oh, right, the donkey movie. Yeah. Um, and he also did a movie about either. like Jeremy Irons plays like a Polish electrician in London in the eighties. Yes, it's a good movie. Um, J- Jersey Skolimowski. <laughs> 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 I don't know how to say it. I apologize to all Polish yeah. people. And <laughs> all Polish people, um, <laughs> if you figured out how to press play on this episode, <laughs> <laughs> I deeply apologize. <laughs> okay, uh, I mean, I, I don't. I, I, mean, I have a few more ideas. I don't want to uh, I give too much away here. I'm going to leave a few back, but like, I don't know. I was just thinking, like, we got to do a Robert Mitchum episode. Yes, and I think we got to do a J- James James Cagney episode. But oh, I was thinking, yes. like. What, what, what about some of the great actresses? Um, like we, we haven't done an actress episode yet, and like yes. look, the movie mindset promises that we will never feature a female director. But you know there are some great there are some great dames in, in front of the camera. Yeah, well, I don't know. I think I think a female I, director. Could I'm be, just kidding about that. If we, <laughs> if we do a, um, a a Liliana Cavani episode, we could do okay. uh, a Francesco. Yeah, Francesco. And also oh, and that the movie, skin. the skin that you freak yes. out, uh, Josh <laughs> sleaze lines with. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, there's also, yeah, I think a, a good actress would be like Marlena Dietrich would tear. I was just going to say Marlena Dietrich. Yeah. There's like a ton we can do. I can't, I'm, my brain's not working. Some today, of those classic but. screen dames. All right. Well, I don't, well, let's not give too much. We will we'll discuss further, but movie and mindset yes. season two will be coming in 2024, but let's leave it there for today. Hey, so I want to thank you so much for filling in today. Once again, uh, yes, always a pleasure. Thank you, for, thank, you for, thank you for dispensing such valuable advice and just, uh, if you're not already a seeking derangement subscriber, please get on that.